Hello, I'm Professor Rossman, and this is the introduction to my Moodle class. If you're in a face-to-face -face class, a hybrid class, or an internet class, it doesn't matter. You will still be using a Moodle section to take your tests, your quizzes, and other materials that will be required of you in the class. This is an example. This picture is an example of the first page of my class as it appears to you when you first open up the Moodle class. If you're in general psychology, it's nearly identical to this information. The dates may be changed because of the semester that you're in. But if you're in my other classes, developmental psychology or personality theories, then the information shown is a little different. However, it works the same way. So this video is still per pertinent to you. The left side has blocks. The right side has a menu system. And we'll break it down in the next slides. We'll look at the blocks first on the left hand side and then we'll look at the menus. So here are the blocks. Uh, the left hand side of the screen has an activities block, a latest news block, a administration block, and a quick mail block. Other instructors may have other blocks for you but these are the blocks that I normally use and if I've added another block you'll see it when you get to this to the, your class. So the activities includes links. If you click on assignments, for instance, you'll be taken to the essays that are open and ready for you to take in the class. Uh, there's a feedback survey, which is an anonymous survey that I'll turn on every once in a while so that you can give feedback in the class, what you liked, what you didn't like. There's a forums link, which is just your discussion boards. And there's a quizzes link. Now, the quizzes link in Moodle does not understand the difference between quizzes and tests, so all your major tests and all your quizzes will be found under the quizzes link. And then there's a resources link and that's all the material for you to learn the information. Now most people, most students will not use this activities link, but it's there for you to use if you need to. I present all the information to you in a page and we'll see that in just a minute. Latest news is the announcements that the instructor has posted, and each announcement will also send out an email. That email will go to your college, uh, college email. If you're not using your college email, you won't see them, so make sure that you use your college email. Uh, you can also get to other announcements. This is the top three announcements, or the last three announcements that the instructor posted, but you can get to older ones by clicking on other topics or older topics. The next block is administration, and the only thing that you see there as a student is your grades, and you need to click on that often. This is very important. I give feedback on all the essays, and you should read that feedback to improve on your next essay. Then the last block is the quick mail block, and I put that in there so that you can send me an email directly from Moodle instead of having to jump out into a mail system. And again, this will send information to your your college email. It will not send to any other email. And when I get it, I will see it as if it came from your college email. And so if I respond to it, it will be responded to and replied to your college email. If you're not using your college email, you're going to lose a lot. Now, uh, Moodle I could use the word Moodle, and I'm going to give you a quick introduction of what Moodle means, because some places call it something different. Um, for instance, my courses may be, you may see it as my courses. Well, the example that I like to give is you buy a car and you buy a Ford or you buy a Mustang. It's the same thing. If you ask somebody, if somebody says, what did you buy? You could say you bought a Ford or you could say you bought a Mustang. It, it's it's the same thing. One is more specific than the other. Moodle is Ford. Moodle is a, a giant program that runs and can be modified so that it's more specific to a college. And my courses is like the Mustang. It's a very specific type of Moodle. Next, we'll look at the menu system, which appears on the right. And you can see here the yellow sections of the menu have links to the units so that you, sh you should know exactly what it is that you have to do. If you click on that link, it will take you directly to that particular area and you can start learning or doing the work that needs to be done for that particular section of the class. Now, this picture is 
the menu system at the very beginning of the semester. So the yellow or the very first unit is highlighted in yellow as well as the first day activities. As soon as the due date goes by, the yellow will turn into a dark auburn color, which means it's passed, it's done, and the next blocks that you need to do will be opened up as yellow. So you'll know what you're supposed to be working on. I have to actually do that manually. So in case I forget to change the colors every single Monday, and then the due dates are also shown and included with each section. So as you can see here, unit one is due May 27th and the first day activities is due May 22nd. Now these particular dates are not the dates for your particular semester. They're a semester that I just copied from. So you may, you need to go to yours and look up your particular class shell, open it up and see what the menu says for you in your semester. Um, you may also notice here that uh, unit three and unit four have exactly the same due date. That's June 10th. This is because this was taken from a summer semester and in a summer semester, we have 10 weeks, but we still have 14 or 15 chapters that we have to get through. And so some of the units are doubled up in order to get through everything in 10 weeks. Summer semester is very fast and <clears throat> a high stress semester. You should not be taking full loads during the summer semester. Notice here, their arrow is pointing to the block uh, for or the section for course documents. You'll be taken to the section of the class where the syllabus is located and all the other information like uh, grading policies and quiz information and essay information. So there's all kinds of different material in there that you need to read to find out how the class works. Uh, we'll look at that particular section just a little bit later in the video. The next uh, section over is for the Academic Support Center of the school. And if you click on that link, it will take you to the Academic Support Center for the school. And the Academic Support Center provides both on-campus and online resources to help you be successful in your classes. Uh, if we go down one row and over to the other side, then Access Tests is where you will actually click on that and all the tests will be linked in there so that you can go to there during the time frame that it is that the test is open and click on it and it will you will see the link for the test and be able to start the test at that point. When a test is available the link will appear in that section and when you're ready to take the test you will go to that section and click on the link for the test. Tests are given online and will usually open on a Tuesday and close on a Saturday night at 11.50 p.m. Uh, tests are timed quizzes or not, tests are timed, you pick the day and time, you will be undisturbed while you take the test. If you're a morning person, take it during the morning. If you're a night person, take it during the night, but make sure that your spouse is satisfied and that will not bother you for a half an hour to an hour and the kids are taken care of and they will not bother you for a half an hour to an hour if you're gonna do this from home. Otherwise, you can do it from the college and a local library, anywhere that there's a computer that you can access the information. The announcements and common forums area, uh, if you click there, it'll take you to the section where you can see the announcements, click on it, click on a link for announcements and open it up and see all the announcements that I've posted. There are also some forums in this section where you could talk to other students like, uh, uh, like a water cooler forum and to give feedback on what was confusing or what was well taught, as well as the forum for technical questions as well. All these arrows are pointing to the links underneath and the second group of blocks or sections in this menu system. And all of these are a link to every single section in the class, section being a chapter basically in the class. And uh, Psych 150 will have 14 units or chapters Psych 241 or uh, developmental psychology will have 15 units and the develop and the personality theories will have 14 units or chapters. The very first link in the top left hand corner is the first day activities. These activities are extremely important. Do them as soon as possible. 
When you click on that link, you will be taken to a page that looks like this. There's a lot here to discuss. First and foremost, when you get to your class, when you first open your class, you need to do this as soon as possible. Click on the link and follow the directions. Underneath the first day activities, there's a link. Click on it, follow the directions it tells you to do. Uh, it is called the first day activities because you must get this done immediately, uh, hopefully on the first day, but at least by the 10% date. If you, if you do not complete this before the 10% date, you will be dropped from the class. This is a federal mandate. You must show activity for a graded assignment within the first 10% of the class or you will be dropped from the class. Also, you will not see the rest of the class until you do a specific part of this activity called the icebreaker discussion. I have hidden everything in the class except for this material here until you do the icebreaker discussion. So you must post in the icebreaker discussion to see anything else in the class. There are two videos in this section. You are looking at one of them right now. This is the class orientation video. The other video is the first impressions video, and in the directions for the first day assignments, you have to send me an email, and part of that email is your reaction to the first impressions video, so make sure you watch that first impressions video before you send me the email. There's also a picture and a description of the textbook that we will be using in this class. Notice the tiny squares on the far right of the picture. This is a tracking mechanism. If the box is checked, then it lets you know that you did something in that particular section or that particular area. So if you have posted at least one time in the icebreaker discussion, the box is checked. In most discussions, if you post twice, it will be checked. So remember, only the icebreaker is one post. You still need to do a second post to get full credit for it, but at least it will be marked as completed uh, by the tracking mechanism, and you will then be able to see the rest of the class. Many students like this to help them remember if they've completed some activity. It is also, it lets me know that a student has completed a, an assignment. Uh, do you remember how that we got, how we got here to this particular screen? We clicked on the yellow section in the menu system for what? First day activities. Be sure to do that as soon as you sign in the first day or at least before the 10% date of the class. Uh, let's um, look at the course information section now as it appears when you click on course information. Here's a partial view of the course information section. My contact information comes here. Then there's a video for me to introduce myself as if this wasn't enough. Next are links to important documents that you are required to read that answer almost every class, every question that I get in class. There's um, a standard syllabus, there's syllabus addendum, information that isn't in the standard syllabus because every teacher is a little bit different. There's a standard syllabus that everyone has to follow. And then there's the addendum, which tells you the differences between, between teachers. Uh, grading policy is in there, so make sure you read that. As a matter of fact, you should print that out and carry it with you in a folder of some kind all over the place so that you can refer to it, um, and the 16-week spring schedule as well. Uh, in this particular semester, it's uh, in, in depending on what semester you're in, it could be a 10-week, a 12-week, a 14-week or a 16-week semester, so uh, that particular schedule will be, will be posted. There's academic integrity policies, all kinds of policies that you have to read in here before you send me your first email. Now let's look at the first unit. I'm going to click on that unit. In this menu, you see it is due on May 27th. Uh, your due date may be different depending on the year and semester that you take the class. If you click on the link intro, then the screen will refresh and you will see the menu at the top. And when you scroll down below that menu, the next section that appears will be the introduction unit. If you're familiar with Moodle, you know about the great scroll of death that happens when all sections are available. You have to scroll through all those sections in order to get to the last section. Well, this, this menu system stops that from happening. It, whatever you click on, it is the next section below the menu system. So only one section will appear beneath the menu. There's no more scroll of death 
if you use this particular menu system. So here we are in the first unit. Uh, we're currently looking at the top portion of the first unit. It's actually going to take me three screens to show you the entire first unit, uh, but there's things that I want to talk about in each one of them. So notice in this picture there's a heading which tells you the section that you're viewing. There's a, usually a picture next to the heading with some explanation about the picture, in this case Socrates, and uh, it's a GIF so it'll actually change between Socrates and uh, Wundt and a few other psychologists. Sometimes there's a short portion of a song that's posted that has something to do with the topic. In this particular case, it's Pink's song, Don't Let Me Get Me, because it's a very psychological song. And then there is a heading called Learning Resources. Uh, this is where all the learning material for that unit is posted. So everything under Learning Resources will be posted here uh, for you to learn the material. You can see here the normal distribution curve is one of the very first things but there's also a learning objectives link that you can click on to see the learning objectives, the things that I want you to learn in this, in this particular section. I'm going to scroll up a little bit then from here, uh, and the bell-shaped curve will go up to the top, and then there'll be information that's below it. So if I scroll down the page, you will have to scroll down unless you have a huge monitor. Uh, I, I don't have a big enough monitor, so I have to scroll. Uh, this information now is more information in the learning resources section. There are videos. Most units will only have two videos, but you'll see here we have four videos, actually five videos, because this unit is not just the history of psychology, but also covers the science of psychology. So <clears throat> you can see a crash course video and a link to a discovering psychology video. Uh, there, those are two videos for introducing psychology to you. And then there's another crash course video and another discovering psychology video for the science behind psychology. Now I'm going to scroll up again, and that fifth video is being shown at the top of the page now. So I scrolled down uh, to the bottom of the unit, and now you can see the tracking boxes on the far right. Remember the tracking boxes we talked about just a few minutes ago? When you do the activity, the box will automatically check to let you know that you did that work. And the next slide, I'm actually going to take those out so I can crunch the screen a little bit so it gives me more room to explain what the rest of that material is. So there's a PowerPoint slide presentation and then there are my lectures underneath the PowerPoint. I have taught psychology for over a dozen years and I recorded my lectures. So each lecture is about 15 minutes long. Uh, the lectures for Unit 1 are links to an online book that I'm writing based on my lectures that I've recorded. I actually transcribe them and put them in book form so you can read the lectures or you can listen to them or you can do both. Uh, then there's another link or two of my notes or as some students call them, my rantings. And in the next slide, I'll show you how my online book actually appears. So if you clicked on, for instance, the History of Psychology Lecture Number 1, it would take you to the book. And here's the book. This is what the lecture looks like in book form. When I finish the book, they will all look like this. As of 2017, there are still some lectures that are strictly audio. I hope you enjoy this book version, and I hope it helps you learn material easier and better. Next, uh, there's a crossword puzzle link to give you a chance to see how well you know the material. Remember, this is still learning resources. This is not graded. You use the crossword to help you to learn. If the crossword puzzle is, is, is not a grade, why would you do it? Because it shows you whether you really know the material or not. Uh, crossword is a great way for testing your ability to recall material. If you can recall the material, like in a crossword puzzle, then you truly know the material. And we'll actually be discussing that fact in the memory unit when we talk about memory. Uh, next is a link for the unit quiz. And there's a quiz for every single unit. This link allows you to print the quiz. It is in PDF form. So you need the Adobe Reader for it, which is free. Uh, you print it out and fill it in. And then you take that filled in test and you use it to take the actual online test for a grade. Let me go to the next slide here. So 
there's a very large black bar that distinguishes the difference between the stuff on top, which is the learning resources, and the material on the bottom, which is your actual graded material. So that bar separates the learning resources from the graded items. Everything above the black line is there to help you to learn the material. Everything below the black line is for a grade. So these are your homework assignments for unit one, for instance. You have a quiz, you have a discussion, and then you have a link that says read this article and then write an essay about it, and it's called The Ancient Roots of Psychology. So you click on that, it'll open up, you can print it out, or you can just read it on, online. And once you've read it, then you write an essay about that particular article, picking out the critical portions of the article, what you think are critical, and then you come back, write an essay, and post it in the Ancient Roots essay submission link. I'll talk about essays a little bit later. So graded items are as follows, a quiz in every single unit, a discussion in eight of the 15, 14 or 15 units, an essay in eight of the units, and six tests in general psychology, three tests in developmental psychology, and three tests at this time anyway in my personality theories classes, and then a final exam. Uh, see the course documents area and the grading policy, and it will tell you exactly how many tests and other materials that you have to do and how they're graded. Notice that there is a link on this page to take you to the next section, which is not seen here, but the previous section showing an arrow to the left is previous. There's an arrow after the jump to to show you can go to the next section. And in jump to, there's a, it's a drop-down box. You can go to any section in the jump to. Uh, but most students will not be using these. However, I wanted you to know what they are in case you see them and wonder what they are. Every unit is set up the same way. Learning resources are at the top, and learning activities that are graded assignments are at the bottom below the black line. In the picture below, you see my grade book from a previous class with the students' names removed. Notice I took this picture before the final exam was given. It's actually empty. Uh, there's no grades there. It shows some important features of the grading in my class. First, notice that there are both a percentage and a total points column. The total points will determine your grade, not the percentage. The percentage will be nearly correct, but not absolutely correct. It will usually be at the very end of the semester, slightly below your total points. And the reason for that is because I have extra credit points and the percentage doesn't recognize the difference between extra credit points and normal points. And so your total points is what's really your grade. Uh, an average is a mathematical formula based on the total points that you've accumulated out of the number of possible points that are available so far in the class. Every time I open a new assignment, there's new, there are, there are more points that are available for you to accumulate. And so your average will be based on how many of those points you accumulate. The average may show 94.66 as it does for one of the students in this picture. However, the total points shown is only 77.73. This student is guaranteed a grade no less than C because they have 77 and I and I'm my grade is based on a 10 point scale. So anything above 90 points and 90 points and above is an A. Anything 80 to 89 points is a B. Anything 70 to 77 points, 79 points is a C. And so this particular student has 77 points so far in the class. When I, op when I open up the outcomes measurement and the two final parts of the final one, final two, um, there's more points for them to accumulate. And so their points will start to go up as they accumulate those. And their their percentage will become more and more like the number of points that they've gotten. So for instance, uh, if they accumulate just three more points on the final exam, this student will have 80.73 or a B. If they get 13 more points on the final exam, they'll have 90.73 or an A. If this student did absolutely nothing else in the class or completely bombed the finals and got zero on the finals, their percentage 
that they see of uh, 94.66 will continue to drop as they get zero on the outcomes, zero on the final part one, zero on the final part two, until their average equals 77.73. So your points show you your grade because all those zeros obviously will ruin their 94.68 average. Your grade will be based on the total points, not the average. The average in every class you have ever taken is only a potential or possible final grade. If you keep doing the same level of work, your average will stay the same. If you do poor work, it will go down. And if you do better work, it will go up. But your true score in the class, when it only has 100 points in the class, like mine, is the total points that you accumulated. So in my class, there are 107 points. Seven of those are extra credit points. Your point total at the end of the class will be your final grade. The points never go down. You can't take away points that you've already acquired. If you accumulate a point, it's yours forever, unless I find out you cheated, and then I can take them away. Uh, points can only accumulate or go up normally. The student here with a 61.19 points is guaranteed at this point a letter a letter grade of D or higher, if they do no other work in the class, their average of 74.26 will fall with every zero that they get until the percentage equals the number of points they acquired. And that is the way every class works, but most instructors do not show you how many points you have. I show you your true grade, the points. Other instructors only show your average. Uh, get as many of those points as possible now, this is how your grades are shown to you in Moodle. At the top is your percentage average. Below that, I display your total points. And at the end of the class, I will put in a final letter grade. And notice in this particular picture, it's empty because I took this at the very beginning of the class of the semester. And so there's nothing there yet. Uh, if this student stopped doing work, what grade would they have? If they stopped doing all work at this point, they would have their points value of 76.86, right? Because the student already accumulated 76.86 points, and that's a C. Uh, even if they stopped accumulating any more, but their average would go down and down and down as they get zero and zero and zero um, on required material. So many students have issues with essays, so I want to discuss what the essay is right here. Uh, this is feedback that a student received on an essay. You can find it by scrolling down while, while viewing your grades. When you're looking at your grades, scroll all the way down and you get to a section of essays. And for each essay, I put in a particular, very specific information feedback. So notice that particular one sentence. Uh, to get any points, you must have a minimum of five paragraphs with five sentences. You must have five paragraphs with five sentences to get any points at all on your essays. You only need one quote in an essay, and every quote you use in a paragraph should be accompanied by four sentences in your own words. Every quote you use in a paragraph should also have four sentences in your own words. Why? Because this is your paper. So 80% of the paper should be yours. So if you put a quote in, that's somebody else's words, then you need four more sentences in your own words. I give very detailed notes when I grade your essays to help you to improve on the next essay. You can see here that the student did not turn in a Mike Mays essay. They did turn in the sleep essay and they got two and a half out of three points. They had a good header, and I give you exactly what the header should be, and a good quote with a page number reference. The student only discussed half or some of the critical information in the essay. So they got two and a half points instead of three. Detailed instructions on how to write an essay in my class are posted in course information section. Here is an example of an essay. I've actually blocked out the student's name, but you can see the header right here has six elements in it. The student's name, which is blocked out, a date, college name, class description, which is in this particular case, it was Psych 150N, unit number, what unit you're in that this particular K-12 
came from, which is the memory section, which was unit seven in that particular case, and a title of your essay. Each paragraph has at least five sentences. It can have more than that. It doesn't require that you have just five, but five is the minimum. At least one quote is required in each paper, and each quote must be followed by a page number reference. As you can see here um, in the green, underlined green, you can see the, the fact that she, this particular student, she or he, uh, started. The article states that it is, quote, somewhere between remembering and forgetting, end of quote, and then her page number reference for where it came from in the article. Don't forget your page number reference or you will get points taken off. Notice the quotation marks on the front and back end of the quote as well. Every quote is the same way. Starts with a quotation mark, ends with a quotation mark. Without the quotation marks, it's called plagiarism because it has to be an exact phrase from the article. And if you don't put quotes in it, you're saying you have that sentence is yours. But that's plagiarism. It is not yours. It is somebody else's, and that's why you're quoting it. I hope this helps you navigate the class. Remember to do the first day activities as soon as possible. Enjoy your semester and email me if you have any questions at all. I look forward to teaching you. I hope you have a good time this semester. See you in the next video.